Hare Krishna going through. Welcome back to the Monks podcast. Thank you very much Hare for Krishna. joining again for this series. So, last session we discussed about okay. Gita and political philosophy. So, we discussed broadly about two themes, the individual autonomy and state jurisdiction, state authority and how they mm-hmm. harmonize. And in that you talked about how the concept of karma, that ultimately the state is supposed to facilitate dharma, artha, karma and moksha. So, karma is can be broadly associated with autonomy on the side of the state and then on, on, on the individual. And we talked about the state's power being limited in various ways that although there is genealogical succession, but still there was competence was considered. Here's some examples. And the, and the natural tenure was in the form of the Vanaprastha being taken by the king. And the representatives of all the Varanas who would, give, who would be in the ministerial body. So today I thought we'll move forward and discuss uh, the further some further points so broadly speaking if we consider the the gita's teachings there there is a spiritual aspect to it and then there is a and there is you, we could say maybe non spiritual aspect so for example it describes that there are there are kings so that a state should be governed by kings is this uh, an essential teaching of the Gita or is it you could say like sometimes there's a difference in between what is prescriptive in a scripture and what is descriptive. This is how things were done at that time. But mm-hmm. so for somebody who has to administer according to the Gita is the uh, royalty a man- necessary form of the government? So are there some parts of the Gita which are spiritual and universal which everybody has to do them for living the Gita? And are there some parts which are contextual and the they will be they can be varied according to time place circumstances. Basically, if you see Gita while re, while speaking, you know, to Arjuna, which is contextual again because it's a historical reality. Yes. And at the same time, Itihasa is supposed to repeat in itself because it has a spirit also. Therefore, royalty is a position and royalty is a spirit also, like Ishwari Bhava. Okay. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so whoever has the that Ishwari Bhava that I want to do something good to others. So then they fall into the category of royalty. Certainly, there are certain, I think that could be a different discussion altogether, democracy, royalty, dictatorship, and uh, you know, different kinds of government. You know, but Gita talks about Gita's goal is not to introduce royalty, but Gita's goal is to introduce the spirit of royalty so that people are there to feel that Ishwari Bhava and produce some good result towards others. Oh, okay. So, in one sense, the Gita is more concerned with the fruit that is to be achieved rather than necessarily this is the process by which to achieve the fruit. So the, Yes, that is not the goal of Gita. Oh, okay. Makes sense. So, ultimately, mm-hmm. dharma has to be established. Whether the dharma is established yeah. through... Through through a royalty or through some other form of government, that is that is not the key thing. Okay, that's that makes sense. So now, if we consider similarly, uh, now for the interaction between the state and the state and the individual, broadly in modern society there are two thought systems, or we could say about socio-economic organization. One is uh, capitalism, where the idea is the metaphor they use is this. That the individual is floating in an ocean of autonomy with some islands of state power. So normally you can do what you want, but the state will restrict you in some things. Whereas the metaphor for communism is that the state is floating in an ocean of power and the individual is restricted to some small islands of autonomy. So now capitalism in some ways has been historically much more successful, but it has also led to a lot of inequality. Communism started with the aspiration of equality and we could say so- socialism was like a softer cousin of communism. But uh, generally social communist experiments have not only not failed, but they have been disasters. So with respect to this vision, would the Gita's thought uh, fall on either of these two sides or how would the Gita's philosophy relate with these, these two thought systems? Again, this is a very interesting subject. Generally, you know, I, I remember reading also that Krishna has been presented as the original social activist who fought against the capitalist. 
Really? Yeah, I've read those kind of articles. Yes. And then on the other end, there are some people who say, you know, Krishna was supporting the capitalism raised by the Pandavas. No. So, okay. so if you see Jarasan for that matter, or that uh, Banasur, right? Banasur with thousand-handed Rakshasa. Yes. So when Krishna trimmed 1998 hands of Banasur, that is also seen as decentralizing the power because the power was concentrated in one place. A person having thousand hands, nothing but controlling everything from every perspective. You should have only two hands. Oh, okay. Yeah. So therefore, therefore, capitalism, which is decentralized, where there is a facility for others to grow along with however much you want to grow, that kind of capitalism becomes dharma-centric. But if there are only few players in the market, and these players who are in the market are always trying to dismantle others, like again Jarasan, Jarasan was capturing all other kings. Right? He wanted to give them in sacrifice. It is just like a very huge, huge uh, capitalist person Breaking like how the Walmart came and destroyed all the small markets. So Walmart apparently looks Jarasa. No, keep oh killing smaller, smaller kings. Right? Oh God. In so what did they do? They in India also, Amazon has done to many small, small businesses. Yeah. Lockdown. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. So these kind of, these are modern Jarasandas. They want to destroy everybody to such an extent. There should be, there should be no competition. It is between customers directly and the big capitalists. And whatever price they talk about, you have to pay because there is no competition. Mm. So this kind of capitalism ultimately leads to the same kind of concept of communism also. The destination of communism and capitalism leads to the same place. They, they is dictatorship. Oh, okay. So capital, you can say in one sense, capitalism will lead to sort of economic dictatorship. And communism will lead to political dictatorship in some ways. Perfect. Yes. Oh. And through economical through the economical uh, you know control, you'll eventually control the political reality also. Yeah, of course, that is true. So yeah. but the that is vice versa. Okay. So therefore, Gita Gita basically opposes this. You know, because if you see why Krishna wanted Yudhishthir to be the Chakravarti Samarat. The Chakravarti Samarat is so powerful that he creates a centralized inspiration but decentralized governance. And Jarasan wanted to have a centralized control where he will choose which king of his will reach which place and they are directly you know, uh, reporting to Jarasan. Mm -hmm. so that is how actually, if you study Mahabharata, you'll understand this whole concept, the difference between Jarasan wanting to be Chakravarti and Yudhishthira wanting to be Chakravarti. So in one sense, we can say that Yudhishthira had decentralized power because he actually never annexed any kingdom. Even when, she, yes. uh, even Jarasan was killed, he, he installed Sahadev as the king. So, yeah. Yeah. so in that sense, okay, so each of the... So you could say in their particular culture or their particular ways of working, he didn't really interfere with them. Naturally, we would not. Okay. Therefore, when people say India want, India will be the next superpower, I say that is ridiculous. We never want to be like that because that doesn't define the, the principle of Sanatan Dharma. Really? Right? What, what is, how is that? Yeah, when, Sh when Shivaji, I'll give you an example. Shivaji Maharaj had no desire to rule Delhi. Rule? He said Delhi H. Shivaji Maharaj had no desire to rule Delhi. He wanted Delhi people to rule Delhi. Oh, and really? therefore, the king from uh, uh, Chhatrasal, Bundelkhand king, when he came to Shivaji Maharaj, he said, hey, you are from royalty. You don't work for me. He said, you go and rebel against the Mughals and you start your own kingdom. We will, we will support you and help you and cooperate with you. Oh. So there is no there is no question of one king ruling the entire continent centralized. 
one king ruling the entire continent is based upon inspiration when we say yudhishthira maharaj ruled the entire continent he did not control anything and everything he just inspired many many kings mm. okay so now it's one thing in a, the, we can give historical explanation there's a very striking parallels between jarasand and yudhishthira maharaj chakravarti as now how do you think those principles how do they relate with today say for example uh, if we say there's no one king now there are nation states and yes. uh, then now, now you could say that in one sense a nation states also so india is considered one nation but then there is a lot of diversity across from state to state also in india and in some ways europe has many many small states um, and on many small countries but all of them have significant diversity of culture so mm-hmm. in europe they started uh, so when we say that there is a, one country may get partitioned into two or two country one king may attack another king, one state country may attack another country and rule it so the idea is that basically independent of the if i am understanding you right the independent of the say the political size of a particular place the important thing is that the local people have a voice in how they are ruled is that the overall yes. principle very much therefore if you see when people again in india also when a mp the lok sabha member and the mm-hmm. and the local ward the the corporator now corporator is much more realistic in regards to people's need of water electricity road and everything expecting that to be done by the lok sabha member does not even make it real because that is not his duty you know he is representing the entire city mm. in the central government asking the prime minister to fix the road means people don't understand the political dynamics oh okay no so the mm-hmm. for me the for my daily requirement a corporator is more important but for my national integrity and my connectivity from state to state i need a central government so therefore if you study the chief minister makes more sense to rule the state than expecting the prime minister to interfere no so therefore having a same government in the central government and the state government there is a cooperative growth but if there is a state government which is rebelling against the central government in the name of for a you are outsider you can't come then what happens the state does not grow but the state people feel some kind of affinity oh he is from our state and that's what happened in bengal yes exactly as you know? the same thing so, exactly so, yeah so therefore this principle was very important for krishna you know because again we take for example when ram lila was happening all over india before the television came there were millions of actors who were impressive inspiring to the local crowd but the television and when the movie industry came so then there is one amitabh bachchan there are millions of amitabh bachchan so then amitabh bachchan become equal unto jarasan destroying all the smaller talents beautiful huh? you could even say this in a little provocatively speaking it applies in the spiritual domain also like if this if, if every village or every town will have its own local saintly people and they get inspiration from them otherwise we have like a national or a global saintly person they they're not accessible to everyone and so so in one sense everything is like i think before the british came there was the idea of a self sufficient village economy so you could yeah. say not only village but you are saying culturally also it was self sufficient in some ways that's what now it is more about people are more interested in interested in knowing their superhero rather than getting their help to transform their individual self no individual well. self transformation can only happen when there is a direct connection to your teacher one to one if krishna the supreme lord can only speak gita to one person 
just imagine how much investment is required by ordinary teacher to teach hundreds of student hmm. you can give info about bhagavad gita but you cannot teach bhagavad gita there has to be one to one dynamics beautiful so now just going back to this so overall in our many podcasts you discuss you have emphasized this theme of decentralization now, in terms of so, uh, socio economic environment see, let's let's look a little bit of capitalism and communism a little bit more so uh, with respect to communism one of the things that happened maybe today we could discuss about the challenges with it that in one sense the aspiration was good that we want equality that that people are poor and the poor are being exploited by the wealthy so the but the idea was the wealthy will never give up their wealth so it has to be taken forcibly from them and whatever degree of force is required that is fine and then we will redistribute the wealth but then what happened is it is more more energy is spent in in grabbing the wealth than in redistributing it and it's also there is a presumption over there that it's almost like the wealthy have always stolen the wealth and they have hoarded it but in one sense we can say wealth doesn't just exist automatically in nature wealth has to be created even it exists in nature even if the ground is fertile still somebody has to plow it harvest it intelligently so sometimes wealthy people might be because wealthy because of their power because of their exploited in the power but sometimes it's just because of their competence and diligence so when the wealthy when wealth is seized from the wealthy and it is given to the poor so there is a default assumption in communism that the wealthy are you could say almost vicious and the poor are victims and they are virtuous hmm? they have been exploited again so they need to be benefited and the assumptions get reversed in in capitalism in capitalism it's like somebody is poor it's your fault you haven't worked hard if somebody is wealthy they must have worked hard they must be intelligent they must be smart so in one sense in both of these it is not just a socio economic dimension but there is a moral dimension to the philosophy and because of that moral dimension the result is that let's if we focus on communism is felt that by any way we destroy the wealthy and then we will we will distribute wealth to the poor but it didn't work out in one sense the wealth was destroyed but the poor never became wealthy the state became powerful and uh, i was reading that in pol uh, i think in one of the in poland or one of the states they the government was determining the prices of something like 79000 commodities and by the time they determined the price of the commodity the the commodity was sometimes would get spoiled also because they had to consider so many factors so it just didn't work so the intention was good that there is discrimination there is a diversity that 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 is not disparity not diversity disparity which has to be corrected mm. so from a spiritual perspective or philosophical perspective what is wrong with this idea that the disparity in human society has to be corrected and the state should play a role in that in some ways there is a similarity when the bhagavatam gives the example that the moon sorry the 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 sun it it uh, takes water from the ocean and then the clouds give water to the wherever it is needed so like that a charitable king takes taxes or takes wealth from the wealthy and gives it to the poor so in principle it is not the idea is not entirely wrong if i understand right but in the implementation it went it went disastrously long at times so we like to comment on this overall so yeah so that's a very nicely explained by you you know the the socialistic or communistic philosophy of you know everybody should have you know same equal wealth you know there is a difference what the dharmic capitalism will say everybody should have equal opportunity but in regards to equal consequences that is a stupid idea the rains okay. will fall everywhere with the same uh, force but according to the land according to what you can cultivate there you know you cultivate if you try to cultivate something which is not supposed to be there like there is a sandalwood tree which grows in the malaya hill but in coastal goa if you try to grow sandalwood instead of cashew mango and coconut 
you will not get that also and you will not get the sandal wood also for the communism communistic idea of creating equality in regards to consequences would fail miserably in philosophy and fail miserably in implementation also because the very people who took all the resources to distribute they became greedy capitalist mm. you know yes there was there was there was a uh, you know inequality or exploitation caused by the greedy capitalist so therefore the good communist felt some of them intentional uh, with a good intention now we have to change this right so what they did was they they were angry with the criminals and they ended up becoming murderers the criminals were supposed to be reformed punished but they be, the the communist in the name of reforming they murdered so there was increased crime the criminals and the murderer the capitalistic were cure criminal and the communists were murderers yes so true huh? yeah so this kind of chaos in western history it it started right right from the french revolution time when they felt that the the king is uh, very exploitative unconcerned and they started started killing royalty one by one by one and eventually even those who were uprising up, up against the royalty they started killing each other also yeah. so basically we can say that ultimately it is that the human spirit or the human heart needs to be reformed without that no system will work and especially if a system is centralizing power then the danger from that system is much more because then the damage a person can cause will be far more if say an individual person an ordinary person has a corrupted heart or whatever the problems they will cause will not be that much because how much influence yeah. they have in one sense so therefore yeah so therefore if you read dharmapal's book he actually talks about the the poorest place in india compared to the wealthiest state in india in 17 16 18th century according to the british record he said there are certain pulses which poor would not afford to buy and the ratio between rich and the poor was 1 is to 19 1 is to 18 1 is to 13 like if i am earning 1 rupee as a poor man you would be earning 18 rupees as a rich man now see the difference between ordinary laborer and the ceo who earns the money when they are talking about disparity the capitalism and so called communism see it is not only the the communists may not uh, take a salary the kind of money they spend on themselves mm uh, right the french uh, the france was planning to make 70% taxing on their citizens but then the 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 people in the off, those who are in the office they are spending on their hair cutting 10000 euros in the name of the state they are not taking salary but the resources they are using mm. you know so just like a spiritual person also may say i don't take any money but their their expenses in regards to on themselves could be much higher than Uh, somebody who is a nice sanskrit teacher so therefore it is not only the salary which counts it is the benefit what you are deriving from the so communist derive the benefits and the capitalists show their income but at the end of the day both of their life in regards to living a life is almost the same both are using the same kind of resources one in the name of state and one in the name of his profit so there is no change in their lifestyle no? oh okay so now what you said struck me a little bit so in the vedic tradition there was there were the four varanas and in one sense can we say that the those who in the renounced order they were maintained by the state or it was not by the state it was by individuals i means uh, because would that be something like would the renounced order those who live in that 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 require a communist kind of model or it was one key difference i have read about is that that in communism in the uh, in, a, in a in a socialist model when the state intervenes the state says okay we will take care of the poor 
then that actually prevents the forming of bonds and interactions between people very good and that yes. is the charity the spirit of charity i have given taxes why should i give charity now yeah something like that yes so therefore actually in 1990 when pv narsingra wanted to bring this bill of providing social uh, what is that you know giving the what uh, americans receive the benefits social of security social security social security social security one of the economists guru murthy ji had told him pv narsingra he said social security is always privatized in india and you are making part of a public sector and he gave the figures in america what is happening with the social security at some point of time they will not be able to provide social security because there are more people taking social security from the state than those who are providing tax to the government but in india he said in india social security is the responsibility of the family of the community and the village so it will always better to remain private rather than making it as a public sector okay and then and that as you said that increases the bond within the community so the state which is impersonal you know like a ghost right in one sense state doesn't have a form so it's like a ghost so when there is a ghost which is providing you a good ghost apparently a good ghost providing you okay so ghost is a ghost when you take when you take benefit from the ghost whether it is a good ghost or a bad ghost eventually the consequences of taking resources from the ghost it will squash it will squander it will destroy your power to function independently and feel empowered this is amazing and therefore therefore simply see a best example is a farmer for that that matter when a farmer is receiving rice from the government where is the impetus to grow the rice on his own mm. so more than 40 to 50% of land in india which is cultivable and indian land can cultivate crops three times in a year so why would i cultivate so basically when they developed that food security bill the previous government somebody wrote this article is it pro poor or pro poverty oh god when the state interferes when the state interferes it becomes pro poverty and when the people take part out of sensitivity it become pro poor empowering the poor to evolve to grow to you know increase their wings in contribution to the in the community's growth therefore there is no alternative for a people's involvement you know to the state's involvement that is the big difference between the the cap- capitalistic communistic and the dharmic varnashram idea sorry and therefore for you know therefore therefore you know some of the professions which were not salaried they would contribute their talent and the and the people would give them a lot of charity hmm okay makes sense so if i is going back to say the difference between say so capitalism is just it leaves everybody to have their own their own fate whereas communism says the government will decide everyone's fate but the government is not able to manage whereas you said the dharma centered world view the is it is the there are there are relational bonds where the society itself yes the, the community it's yeah. community itself takes care of people so yeah hmm and therefore interestingly jata karma again we will come back to i want to bring astrology in this jyotish shastra there is one sanskara it is called jata karma okay and it is such a fascinating concept it is so profound in jata karma you will get to know or get to understand you will get to there is some indication about what could be your potential what could be your limitations and there are certain solutions 
and the solutions are always just like if your shan is affected then you take care of the underprivileged people take care of the old people so we at least few hundred thousand people or 1 crore 2 crore are going through the impact of shani so if they know or i need to take care of the old people i need to take care of underprivileged so their charity will benefit them because there is a desire to get well so what happened so they gave and if somebody is affected by ketu it's so interesting so then they will take of certain animals you know if you are affected by buddha mercury then you are supposed to invest your charity to the poor people who are potentially good at education you give them education you give them notebooks you give them this and that so therefore a society was always affected by this planetary position but the solution was always caring for those who are affected by different aspect of limitations you know and that's how they could fulfill therefore in god's creation you know inequality is not caused by disparities of greed it is caused because of their of their genetical reality so what does it do those who have they feel compassionate towards those who don't have and those who don't have they feel grateful for those who are providing them so the disparity gave rise to development of better qualities beautiful you know and the, when the communistic said no no everybody has to be equal so they gave rise to envy amongst the underprivileged arrogance cheating and hiding the resources amongst the wealthy beautiful this aspect of astrology at least the way currently it is practiced or presented it is said the solutions are more in terms of doing rituals rather than doing service and often the rituals are more in terms of which will benefit the astrologer financially that's how it seems to be practiced now that is that is not the reality unfortunately yeah, okay no this is the reality where you are basically connecting with those who are less resources you are becoming more and more sensitive mm. so that's how therefore therefore there was no centralized charity you know from the from the dharmic perspective when you say i distributed 1 million cloth to poor people as an organization i distributed 5 billion plates as an organization so there is a there is a pr which is good nobody is doing at least this is good but the best is you inculcate that qualities in those who are your neighbors let the neighbors feel directly facilitating the growth of those who are underprivileged you don't give food to through somebody else you see the poverty you see their hungry you give them so that is a greater benefit okay so prabhupada would say that in the past you know like he said the grass that should call out is there anybody hungry on the street yeah that's yes, a, that, that's that's yes, the same spirit yes. that's the same spirit yeah it seems that even 200 300 years i think it's a lord macaulay or somebody he said that i have traveled across the country india and i haven't seen a single beggar starving anywhere you know for many people today it's like the india means beggars So there is a culture of charity, then that won't happen so much. Now, okay, and there is a there is a inter- there is a, I'll just add one more thing. There is an interesting book written by some group of people on Annam Bahu Annam Bahu Kurvita. Okay, you know, and interesting they explain that when the British took over India, the royalty were also a particular. They were also a citizen. They were king, and they are also human being. so some of the charity they would do on their own behalf they had their own resources also right when the britisher took over and submitted them under their rule they said one thing he said you cannot give charity to the students education should not be given free the dharmashalas were closed down 
they said and then they introduced a, a royal life to such an extent was very interesting up until the britishers came to india the palace of the king were artistic but not luxurious to such an extent they looked like a five star hotel that's interesting okay and they introduced they introduced cricket amongst the royalty if you see dilip trophy ranji trophy devdal trophy that is not a glory that is a dishonor they had bat in their hand instead of holding sword or helping the poor people so britishers basically disconnected the royalty from being sensitive to their subordinates it's a very interesting if you read that anand bahu kurvita now if you go to if you go to alandi or if you go to dehu also the maharashtrian people who learn this 12 years course in giving talk you know the kirtan they call it as kirtan when these boys come to this places they come without anything with them there are no kitchens you go and visit them now also traditionally these children go and beg in different villages and villages give them food so the kitchen problem is over you don't have to manage a kitchen and they only focus on learning the process of learning tambura learning if the state interferes then it takes away the soul because part of the education system for such knowledge is the interaction of the student with the society hmm otherwise the student will be isolated from the society and they will go and flatter the politicians oh okay okay and that is how then the spiritualist becomes spec- secular they lose courage to speak the truth they speak aggressive tone based upon political you know ideology but they will not speak the truth okay so so, so what it, the britishers considered as begging as heinous activity for the students begging means that i don't depend on anybody you give me food or you don't give me food somebody else will give me the connection between the giver of the food and a receiver of the food is only based upon receiving the food that's it they could not impress they could not control they could not create an ideology okay so in one sense today so like in in the religious sense the word now what we use the word beggar traditionally the word was mendicant mendicant is more like a holy beggar or something like that so you are so yeah. that that was not considered derogatory at all and you're saying that that yeah. that non derogatory tone was also applied to students actually i remember yes. my father would tell me when grandfather was he was from andhra and he had come to mumbai for his college studies so actually he he had like uh, or forget the word they use for seven days he would go to seven different houses every day wow they would feed him so he himself went on to become a teacher afterwards so it seemed that system was going on even not to I mean just a in 50 60 years ago 70 70 years ago also now also i said if you go if you go they are doing like that and they it's become less and less mm-hmm. you know it was always the local village if somebody is sponsoring your school you know from somewhere else he will have an agenda he is paying all the money yeah then he will dictate what to teach but if you are living on begging the teacher is living on begging the the students are living on begging then they were free to teach according to the potential of the student they created more talented people than we created now and these are all these are all actually re- these are all documented history it is not only the philosophy i would recommend people who are listening to read the works of dharmapal these are five year volume work no? okay dharmapal okay yeah. yes we 
So maybe this is a big subject. I'll just broach this and then we can discuss it later if you want, but give some few words. See, in one sense, the world has gone in a very different direction. Now it's highly interconnected. Now, oh, if somebody wants to say, live the Gita in the social domain, in the political domain, at one level, we are talking mm. about the spiritual practices, which we all mm. try to apply from the Gita. But is it that in, we can have both interconnectedness and decentralization simultaneously? Because in one sense, we, I doubt whether we can go back to the level of say, self-sufficiency in the world today. In Turning back the clock may be quite difficult. But so what, what would be the practical application of uh, this principle of decentralization in today's world? In one sense, the internet has connected. See, again, the- again, again, the format, the format may change. The spirit will always remain because spirit or the principles are unchangeable reality. And, and, and therefore, because the principle are unchangeable reality and we see the consequence of such de- such centralized education system, like today only I was talking to some students the entire medical student who are studying in medicine because of fierce competition they take to drugs i i heard this at least one university or one medical college that many number of students commit suicide so again we have to go back to the statistics what are the consequences of such you know, capitalistic and communistic ideology, what are they producing? So therefore, at least people should talk about this thing rather than saying, you know, this is unchangeable. And what is the greatest tragedy is the spiritual communities also follow the model of capitalism only. You know, in what sense? Rather, the, in regards to control, somebody sitting in America what will he or she know what's happening in Kolhapur in regards to how they manage the spiritual community? Okay. Mm, you know, so the, the, the model which is practiced by organizations is more, you know, leaning towards the modern systems. So if we don't do that, the centralized system, like Prabhupada mentioned about every president is a, a representation of you know the the spirit of the community right so therefore the higher leader has to be also be connected to them he cannot be controlling sitting somewhere else not interacting with people then it will not function so at least amongst the when we talk about varnashram 100% it is not correct that you have to live without electricity. I say it's a ridiculous and laughing stock. What, you bring to... city people who are grown... Okay, okay. Uh, you bring a city people who are grown up in the city and force them to live in a village without electricity. Basically, their productivity becomes zero. They're figuring out how to pass tool without light. They're figuring out how to... Cook. I mean, their entire life is wasted. Just because you want them to use no electricity. Where is the productivity? So let us take the spirit of Varanashram rather than the form of Varanashram which was practiced 100, 200 years ago. Okay. You know? It's beautifully put, yeah. So ultimately, we could say that uh, it's uh, there are two metaphors I've seen about it. One is like turning back the clock and the other is turning on the compass. So we can say that we can't turn back the clock, but we can try to turn on the compass in every person. We can equip people with the processes that their own inner, their own, we can say, Viveka Buddhi or their conscience that awakens. And then they will, they will make the decisions. So yeah, just the other day I was talking to somebody in Bangalore and I made a very interesting point. So the beauty, the beauty of the world he says that the social media has caused a lot of disasters. And the, the, the density of connectivity, you know, nowadays people are more, more cruel to each other in regards to judging people. Previously, people, you know, had greater capacity to handle greater diversity. 
now we don't have the capacity to handle greater diversity we talk about freedom but we have defined what is freedom and if you do not fall into that category you will be slandered you will be beaten you will be ridiculed you are forced to resign right so he said but the advantage of this is that if somebody is reading the vedas studying the vedas and if they if they see they are getting benefited by studying the vedas then suddenly every person in in the colony or in whichever area they are they also want to do it and lot of the old vedic teacher they are seeing the changing trend oh okay so when pejar sam started gurukul 60 years ago he went begging from people give me some students to teach i just visited his samadhi mandir you yeah, know yeah and he has his samadhi right in the middle of gurukul his his vidyapeeth and now he has produced hundreds of students who are basically practicing their occupation based upon their propensity so therefore the yuga the time factor you know will always go back to its roots if not completely you know and then again it will be dislodged so the battle between the natural living and unnatural living will always continue so i have to choose an individual how much i want to balance between the natural and in organically oh okay so you could say that this is beautiful that when you saying we have to choose the balance means something we can say from a standard perspective might be unnatural but if that is how i have grown up then that is natural for me yeah. and earlier you saying that yeah. if somebody goes into a village and tries to live without any of the modern amenities then we could say okay it is natural in the original sense but is not natural in my sense and then so in one sense can we say as the essence of varanashram is basically living in a way that is natural to the individual it doesn't have to be completely in nature and it will differ, differ also based on upbringing of a person their their that what will be natural for a person but with the natural way they pers- they pursue dharma they pursue a higher purpose in life higher service to society just yeah very good just like just like if you are living if you are living a life which is sensitized to your upbringing and you are sincerely learning the shastras then automatically you will start wanting to use less and less if you are using big big you know equipment or car driving everywhere so rather than driving 700 kilometers per day you might drive 70 kilometers so that's a big progress okay you know that's a huge progress if you are using 20 sets of you know trousers and clothes every week you might use only three sets which is happening naturally because that is caused by organic growth but suddenly yesterday you are wearing you know costly jeans and suddenly you go to a village and wear a dhoti you know this is not this will not less also go he'll be naked in his spirit he'll be crazy and mad feeling guilty about wearing jeans and not able to wear his dhoti so where is the varnashram he will become varna shankar in psychology in psychology that means mentally he'll just be so varna shankar yeah. means when say the person is homeless i don't belong here i don't homeless. belong here. i belong there he'll be disrupted in his mindset oh okay okay makes a lot of sense Yes, this is beautiful. This is the next time we can discuss a little bit more how how varanasram can be applied in today's world. What it would mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Important discussion. Shall I try to summarize, Prabhu? Is okay. Yes. Yeah. So we started with discussing that are say the Gita's teachings about say politics that a king should be ruling. Are they are they universal or essential? Is it that no? The purpose that establishing dharma is essential. The process is not that important. so those who have the ishwar bhav they may not necessarily be in the official position of the king but if they have ishwar bhav they will play kshatriya roles in whatever political system might be there today and then with respect to socio economic systems we, we discussed elaborately capitalism and communism so with respect to communism the more elaborately discuss the problem that it's more that you take away 
the create the initiative of people and you make the state powerful but the state is it often those who are supposed to redistribute wealth they may not take salary but they take facilities and in one sense the facilities they take are far more than the contribution they make eventually and they may blame capitalists for earning so much money but those who are communists also or socialists also they are also uh, in one sense taking more than what they are giving so in that it didn't it doesn't work because it basically it's like the state is like a ghost a monster which you may take good from it but i say in india social security was proposed and opposed because that social security was provided through the family and through the community so we discussed about although krishna wanted yudhishthir to become the chakravarti it is more like a cent- how to demonstrate how a centralized king could empower and decentralize where jarasand would want to centralize everything and jarasand wanting to kill sacrifice all the smaller kings is like say, a capitalist uh, and monolithic and uh, like a behemoth entity like big company walmart or uh, amazon just closing down devouring all smaller enterprises so where, so you could say um, through jarasand uh, or rather through capitalism like jarasand basically there will be dictatorship in the end but by economic control whereas in socialism there will be dictatorship directly by political control eventually when krishna say cut off the 98 arms of banasur so his whole idea was the don't let any one person become too powerful and then we in that connection we discussed about how in shivaji maharaj said that delhi should be ruled by delhi by the king of bundel gundel khan was it you said that you should rule over there yeah that we will rule so then with respect to varnashram the whole idea seems to be more on self sufficiency in terms of local skill local skills being appreciated like ramli has a beautiful example so that it's not just that we can say ramayan ramayan showed how popular Ra, ramayan still showed how popular ramayan was but actually in one sense the local local people who were acting and who were who were inspired by the ramayan who were enacting the ramayan they were lost so in that sense the local culture may be lost if there is if there is over emphasis on one central glorious figure and then that can affect that can actually diminish the culture so then the solution we can't really turn back the clock now if we talk also about sorry, before that begging may be considered a bad thing in modern times but that is because it is in the past it was more of a expression of freedom that i can go and take from anyone and it was charity between people led to a sort of social bond and social responsibility organically rather than it being dependent on the state so the british stopped charity to the state and they they habituated the royalty to luxury by which they they sort of cut them off disconnected them from the society and that's how the gap increased more and more the disconnection alienation and then we can't turn back the clock but what we can do in whatever situation is this so trying to force people to live uh, from cities and villages we focus more on like whatever is your current nature it naturally you try to serve you try to focus on spiritual growth focus on social contribution and if a person understands higher principles of life they naturally in whatever situation they are they live more simply and they will they will be able to contribute so whether it is villages or cities the important thing is you could say that the purpose is to help people function more effectively in their present social roles and that is what ultimately the purpose of anashram we could say is so we'll discuss about this more next time probably thank you very much very limited thank you thank you hey krishna